Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. But uh, welcome to our virtual Sangha service. And this will be the observance that was scheduled for March 29th, 2020, which was to be a memorial service remembering the legacy of Lady Takeko Kujo and also to honor our past, the Buddhist Women's Association or Fujinkai members who have passed away since last year's observance. And those people are Mrs. Sachi Uemoto, Mrs. Yutaka Yao, Mrs. Chieko Harada, Mrs. Fumiko Kunihara, Mrs. Diane Nakano, Ms. Chiyoko Mizutani, and Mrs. Michiko Taguchi. So this service will honor again the legacy of Lady Takeko Kujo, who was recognized as the founders of the International Buddhist Women's Association that was part of our Nishihonganji tradition. For today's service, with the assistance not in present, but virtually, the producer, Kevin Yoza, who will receive these tapes or videos and then edit them. And then also, I would like to acknowledge the instruction I received from Keith Kojimoto, who helped me to try to figure out all of this technical uh, information. So the service will begin with the uh, Kansho, and then following that, I'll proceed with the chanting of the Sambujo, Three Respectful Callings, the statement of today's service, and for today, chanting Ju Sege. So those of you who are watching and who may have the means to uh, find the uh, sutra, Ju Sege, you're welcome to follow along with me. Following that, we'll be having a message from Mrs. Julie Yumi Hata Wong, who was originally scheduled to be our so-called guest speaker for this year's Lady Kujo MBWA Memorial. And she'll be doing her message remotely, and that will be incorporated into today's service presentation. I'll close with the reading by Lady of a poem by Lady Kujo. And then I'll, I'll offer a few announcements and acknowledgements. So once again, as the BCSF or Buddhist Church of San Francisco Virtual Sangha, welcome today's, to today's reflection.
サンフランシスコ仏教会婦人会聖書とナリウヤウヤシクサンブツケンセイのショーラオアオギスツシミテオンネンドのキサラギキレイリクジョ婦人のツイトホヨナラビニサンフランシスコ仏教会婦人会
Now, with deepest reverence and gratitude for the all-inclusive wisdom and compassion that is Amida Buddha, we hereby reaffirm the three treasures. Namu Kie Gus, we take refuge in the Buddha, the timeless life of wisdom and compassion, which is the source of awakening. Namu Kie Ho, we take refuge in the Dharma, the universal truth of impermanence and interdependence, the illuminating light that is the Buddha's wisdom. Namu Kie So, we take refuge in the Sangha, the community of people dedicated to living harmoniously in the universal truth, a life manifesting Buddha's compassion. Namu Amida Buts, 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 Namu Amida From the Sutra of Immeasurable Life, the verses reaffirming the vows.
everyone. Um, it's nice to see you. I'm imagining you in the Hondo at the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. And uh, we have the soft uh, natural light flowing through our windows. And we smell the, um, the incense burning and the smoke rising from the incense burning urn. And we have people scattered throughout the hondo and trickling in. This is how we gather on Sundays usually, or uh, possibly on Wednesdays for mindfulness, or once a month Saturday for metta. Uh, we gather in our sanctuary, our hondo, our sacred space. And today, rather than physically gathering at our temple, taking refuge, in our historic building, we are taking refuge, sheltering in place in our homes. And we reach out through the power of the internet uh, to connect through our Dharma talks. Now, I'm not giving a Dharma talk, I'm giving a Dharma reflection. My name is uh, Yumi Hatta, Julie Yumi Hatta, and I'm a member of the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. I'm a member of the Buddhist Women's Association, BWA, Fujin Kai here. And uh, I'm also on the board. Um, good morning. Ohayo gozaimasu. I'm so honored to have been uh, invited to give this talk on the occasion of the Lady Kujo Memorial as well as, well as the BWA Memorial. And when Diane Durst finally first asked me, I, I thought, uh, this would be fun. You know, it's, it's Women's Month. Uh, there's so much to talk about. It's such an inspiration. She, one of my sheroes is Lady Kujo and her book of poetry and her essays. Muyuge, the little blue book of poems, uh, have, has always been a favorite. And now we have uh, Leaves of My Heart, uh, just published two years ago, of her essays. So we are... We are blessed with the gifts that she, of poetry and essays that she has left with us. And um, we are in, continually inspired by her life of achievement in so many areas, all powered, I believe, by her belief in the Nembutsu or her, her allowing the Nembutsu to work uh, daily and moment to moment to guide her in, uh, in building or initiating uh, Kyoto Women's College, Asoka Hospital, and funding a free medical clinic in Tokyo to work through uh, many of Japan's uh, 
social disasters, uh, natural disasters at the time. Well, there's Russo, the Russo Japanese War and its aftermath, and the Tokyo earthquake, and um, and an era of of great inequality, both economically and for women uh, and their status. So she was, she did a lot in her era. She was our Eleanor Roosevelt, um, compressed into uh, 40 short years. So there's so much to be in awe. And, um, and I wanted to talk about that and I will. But also, uh, as we know and are experiencing right now, we are in the throes of, uh, of a global coronavirus pandemic. And at so many levels, uh, we are all participants in trying to uh, control and to hopefully eventually eradicate uh, this uh, new uh, disease. And because of that, uh, we are sheltering in place and we're listening to our Dharma and our reflections online. So I wanted to kind of switch gears and think about, well, what, what, what are we missing here? By not being physically at the temple, how do we live a life of Nambutsu? Lady Kujo, wrote poetry that was uh, published in books, became a bestseller, and as well as a column in the Yomiuri uh, Shimbun newspaper, mainstream newspaper. And so her inspirations, uh, her Nembutsu verse and expressions were uh, shared with millions on a regular basis. I imagine that two of my obachangs who are still in Japan, they were born in Japan, uh, maybe 20 years after Lady Kujo. And, um, and I imagine that they would be eagerly reading Lady Kujo's essays and poems in the Yomiuri Shingu. Um, and they were both uh, involved with the Honganji. So I'm, I imagine that that it was a beautiful reflection and um, uh, tool for them to, to carry the Nambutsu throughout their lives, their daily lives. And I think that for our local VCSF temple, that we can see how our BWA members, together with a very active Sangha, has helped to cultivate a place of Nambutsu for um, our members and our friends and our community um, and for uh, society as a whole, I would think, because we are a historic uh, building, we're a historic organization where the Honganji first set foot on the mainland. So we carry this legacy and every, every time we come to the temple, climbing those stairs, taking a deep breath, when we get there, walking into the hondo, taking our bow, doing our oshoko, offering incense, finding a seat, deciding whether we want to be in the front or the back or the middle, um, or take a regular spot. All of that is something that uh, has provided comfort, security, been a refuge for our minds and hearts. And I think that now that we're at home, we can appreciate all that goes into making that place possible. The flowers, the incense, the chanting, the stories, the Dharma talks, the coffee, the pastry, the, the friendly smiles, the catching up of news, the little informal meetings that take place in the social hall, um, buying of tickets, planning of planning events coming up. Uh, it seems like a whirlwind 
of activity. And I think that sometimes when we're there, we don't realize um, how important it is. And if anything, staying at home gives us that perspective of what we have, what we have as far as a Sangha and a temple. We also see that it's not just the physical space that is important, but now is a time to appreciate our relationships and connections. And that as we reflect at home and find our inner peace and calm and serenity, hearing the Nembutsu, feeling the Nembutsu light, that we do keep in touch with our friends, our family, our neighbors, and we do what we can to uh, support shelter in place and other, other ways that our government is trying to control this, uh, this pandemic. We had uh, a nice mindfulness session online this past Wednesday. And uh, we had, I believe, nine to 12 people coming online on Zoom at the same time and doing silent mindful meditation and participating in the Dharma chat afterwards. And it was uh, great to see people uh, in real time and, um, and check in with people. So I think that we, we will try more of this and uh, we look forward to that. Often we're in the, in the social hall, having our coffee or tea and uh, goodies from Benkyodo or homemade from many people. And, uh, and, and we have a large screen with beautiful images, photos, and videos of all of our recent activities. So it's like Sangha mirror on screen, um, put together by Kevin Yosa, photos by Keith, uh, Suzanne Yamada, other people just taking pictures of our Sangha to enjoy, reflect, share. And so that's something that we might miss, but Kevin has also made that available to, um, to our Sangha membership. And so it's really nice to be able to also enjoy that. I wanted to um, appreciate especially our, our BWA uh, because our members have been uh, integral to the temple operations and our infrastructure. And not just in the traditional way that people may imagine when, when we say BWA or Fujinkai, uh, having to do with the, 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 the mouth-watering uh, feasts, food affairs, service of uh, tremendous, uh, tremendously delicious uh, buffets. And that is certainly something that we appreciate. But also much beyond that, or in addition to that, uh, RBWA is an essential service, social service group, reaching out to our elders and also doing all kinds of service, being the front line for our memorial services and otoki snacks and re refreshments with our services and making sure that families of the bereaved are taken care of. And many of our members also are participating in our Sangha projects to work with homeless shelters uh, in the city, the interfaith programs. Many of our members are also out at protests and vigils to show our concern and our care um, about immigrants now being detained by ICE uh, due to uh, very inhumane policies. Um, participating in Sudu for Solidarity, a national Japanese American and allies movement to remind our society that uh, mass incarceration, indefinite incarceration of, of children and families did ha happen before. And let us not continue to repeat that, that uh, 
human rights violation. And uh, many of us are right now trying to, to uh, support actions to make sure that some of the detainees, particularly in the Northwest Tacoma ICE detention center are released during this coronavirus uh, pandemic in a confined uh, environment like the detention centers. Uh, we can only imagine the health and uh, the health and uh, fatality rates that that could easily occur. So as we as we miss our temple, as we recreate in our mind our temple and our sangha, uh, there are ways to be active and to help out if we can, if we choose to. Um, to join with others who are taking action in many different levels. So I wanted to, to close with um, kind of an essay and a poem that Lady Cujo wrote on April 18th, 1926, and it's called Gasho from the Heart. Trapped in a world of chaotic change, we seek an eternal, unchanging existence. There is nothing to rely on in this fleeting world. Everything here is transient. There is not a thing to be proud of in this worldly life where our karma conditions dictate that we spend our lives chasing after illusions. Sadly, we try to hide our spiritual poverty by wrapping ourselves in the finery of grand illusions, exhausted, we must walk a dark path of suffering that stretches endlessly into the distance. How sorry I feel for people caught in this state. But when we openly lament the way we are, when we humbly place our hands in gasho from the heart, we will clearly see the bright torch raised high for, for lost and deluded seekers to gave, gaze upon. Though your august presence is unseen, though your noble voice is unheard, there is a dimension that I alone know where your vow is ever working, where your light is ever shining. As I kneel with hands placed together without a shred of doubt, I joyfully receive you with this gasho from my heart. No more any doubts, no more any doubts, no more any doubts. Thank you very much for listening. Take care, everyone. Let's stay in touch. Minasama, Nihongo no, Nihongo no, Sutsume wa deki masen desu kara, komen nasai. でもコロナウイルスで本当にあ気をつけて体を大事にしてください。手伝いがの人、手伝いの必要があれば、ぜひあ仏教会のオフィスに電話してください。友達に電話してください。お願いします。ナモアミタブツ、ナモアミタブツ。So I'll thank Yumi Hata for her message, but I'm going to be basically seeing it at the same time I think most of the viewers will be seeing it. But I'm sure it will have been a very meaningful way of coming together in remembrance of the contributions of Lady Kujo, who lived her life in a way that was dedicated to helping the marginal and also the people who experienced the great earthquake in Japan in 1923. And according to information that we've read, she died as a result of the fatigue of all the stress 
and all the complications that she encountered as a result of her service to helping the recovery after that great tragedy. So in a way, it seems appropriate that we spend this time to commemorate that spirit of helping others. So again, I would like to thank you for tuning in, logging on, what have you, but connecting with our virtual Sangha. So as a close, I would like to share the poem that we have the uh, actual calligraphy written by Lady Kujo that's displayed on the altar today. In Japanese, original Japanese, it goes, Oi naru mono no chikara ni hikare yuku, waga ashi ato no obotsuka nashiya. Translated as, drawn to the power of great things. Ah, how unsteady my steps. So with that, we'll bring this today's uh, virtual Sangha service to a close, but I'd like to make a few announcements and acknowledgements. Again, acknowledging Kevin Yoza for his uh, technical expertise who pr helps produce these YouTube videos. And on this occasion, thank uh, Keith uh, Kojimoto for assisting me and trying to explain to me how to use these this kind of equipment, all these tools. And hopefully I recorded it correctly or and it's still usable, but uh, we'll see. If you're seeing it, then I guess it worked. Also, I think I'd like to acknowledge the fact that despite the limitations or feeling of restriction, I think it helps to pay attention to the fact that we're fortunate in having the utilities, the electricity that's still working, and the waters, water that comes into our homes so that we're able to get the necessary water to wash our hands, for example, flush our toilets, take showers and baths. And then also to acknowledge all of the dedicated people who are in the hospitals, who are on the front line of trying to help us get through this pandemic in one piece. So the doctors and nurses who are day in and day out trying to give comfort to try to heal and somehow uh, get us through this unprecedented uh, health crisis. Then, of course, assisting them are the first responders of the police, the firemen, the ambulance. And beyond that, to acknowledge that we're still able to get ro groceries, our basic essential supplies are made available to us at the grocery stores and meals prepared at restaurants for us to take out. So just to consider that, we're sheltering in place, but we're not alone. Imagine the millions, actually, unfortunate people who are still struggling to just get the day-to-day -day necessities, who are on refugee camps, who are in homeless situations. And then, of course, the immigrants who are trapped in the detention centers. And so with that, I think the idea of sheltering in place is to stop and reflect on the fact that we do have a shelter, a place of refuge in which we can continue to be mindful of all the causes and conditions that continue to help make our individual existence possible. So, the two announcements I'd like to make, first of, or I guess I'll call them invitations, that 
the Tsudu for Solidarity effort is still ongoing, even though we postponed the national event till next year. But the idea of folding the Tsudu, the Origami Crane, that's an ongoing pro project that you're welcome to continue on in your homes and then at some point we'll bring them all together. And also I thought of inviting you to either call the temple or share emails with any suggestions you might have about how you've come to deal with and cope with this situation. What suggestions you have for the uh, Sangha to think about as far as assisting with our sheltering sheltering in place situation. And so if you'd like to, you're welcome to leave messages on the temple phone or send an email through the website or I guess the Facebook, even though I don't know, I don't deal, do that. But uh, anyway, this is just a thought. And maybe if you have any other thoughts that I could share with these videos, please do so. Okay, so with that, I'll close once again with the words of Lady Takeko Kujo. Oi naru mono no chikara ni hikare yuku waga ashi ato no obotsuka nashi ya. Drawn by the power of great things, ah, how unsteady my steps. Namu amidabutsu. Namu amidabutsu. Namo Amidabs, Namo Amidabs.